Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Allie, this is Allie G Reads, and this is my second installment of the book versus movie. <laughs> and um, this is a controversial one, I think, from what my research shows. So today I'm gonna to talk about I'm thinking of ending things. This book. Um, this book I've mentioned in, I think three videos now up to this point, and we're going for another and it'll probably be mentioned again. This book is, in my opinion, it, first of all, it's one of my all-time favorite books. It's a one setting read. I've tabbed it. I love it. Um, the best psychological thriller I think I've ever read. So there's that. And he's Canadian. Also bonus. Um, but there's something that happened last year that I was not a fan of. And that was the movie adaptation that I was so excited for. I was beyond excited for this. I have a friend and he also loves this book. And I remember talking about the movie coming out with him and we were so excited. And then we watched it and I was like, oh, oh. So before I get into the details, <laughs> let me break this down. The plot. <laughs> the book is about um, a couple. Um, you are following the female character, unnamed, and she is going on a road trip in the snow to meet her boyfriend's family. Um, except the whole time she's having doubts and she's thinking about ending the relationship. And then as they get closer to the farmhouse and as they get there, things kind of start to happen and it gets weird. Um, there's a huge twist ending to this book. That's so good. There are some very creepy, creepy, like things that are happening in this book. And I was genuinely getting creeped out reading it. I love when a book does that. The book was published in 2016 um, and it became a huge hit. And it was one of those like cult books that really took off. Um, I love this book. I love this book. I really like the Ian Reed's other book too. I'm a huge, huge fan of this book. And I love finding that cross section of horror psychological suspense with a plot twist. The book on Goodreads, I go by Goodreads because that's what I use and that's what a lot of people use. Um, so the Goodreads rating for this book is 3.59 out of five based on more than 75,000 ratings. Um, this is also really big on YouTube in, in the book community, like booktube. Uh, a lot of people put this on their best horrors, best thrillers, best mysteries, best suspense. Like this book is really, really well known. Um, a lot of people love it. And a lot of people love the A24 movie <laughs> type vibes that this book has. However, the movie came out. Okay. Before I go any further. I want to preface this by saying I am in no way attacking the filmmaker personally. This is going to turn into a full blown rant. I'm warning you now. I'm not attacking the filmmaker. Charlie Kaufman is very talented. Eternal spotless, uh, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind is probably one of the best made movies ever. And it's really well loved. Um, so I'm not attacking him personally. I'm not attacking him as a filmmaker. Um, but I have reasons for why I strongly dislike this. And I'm trying to be as objective as possible about this because, um, you know, I, everyone has their own opinions and reading and movies are so subjective. So I'm going to try to be objective as possible, but I know how I am. And this is good. This is going to turn into a full-blown rant, so I just want to warn you, it's coming. Uh, this movie was, I think it took a couple years to come out, and Netflix released it last September, and um, I remember the first time I watched it, I actually Instagrammed my reaction during and then after, because I was so angry after <laughs> I know a lot of people I've read the I've read the reviews okay a lot of critics love this it got 80 82 percent 
so it's certified rotten um certified fresh on rotten tomatoes sorry um but that's the critics and that's based on 258 reviews the audience score is only 48 percent and that's a thousand plus ratings for an average of 2.9 out of 5. so it is lower than the book <laughs> a lot of the reviews that i read said the same thing they all were kind of similar uh boring slow pretentious nonsensical and that is I can agree with it and that is how I felt watching the movie first of all um, the acting is top notch Jesse Plemons is really good in the star I forget the leads female's name I'll put it here I forget her name but she was really good uh, also Tony Collette is fabulous in this in this movie and I love Tony Collette top voted tags like when I went on Google I'm gonna insert a picture when I went on Google and I typed in, I'm thinking of ending things maybe, this came up. The top voted tags, slow, boring, dark, and disturbing among the rest. This is a very, this is a very, very mixed review film. This issue is that I felt like I was gonna get a really good, scary movie and I love horror movies. I love psychological thriller and suspense movies. They are my favorite. I'm a huge horror junkie, okay? I was ready. I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to hear this like creepy voice come through and what and what is it going to sound like? Uh, I really want to know like the scene in, when she goes in the basement in the book and like I got that like creepy vibe at home and like someone was behind me. What is that going to look like? It didn't happen. It didn't this took a good horror and suspense movie and made it a confusing art house drama definitely wasn't horror it definitely wasn't thriller it got the confusing part it made you feel very confused and you didn't know what was happening, which is how it was like in the book. But when the reveal happens in the book, and I'm going to go spoiler free, when the revealing happens in the book, you're left with a holy shit. When the reveal happens in the movie, there is no reveal. A lot of people said, I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't know what that ending was. What is this movie even about? And then you have to get a video explaining what the movie is about and i'm all for an ambiguous ending but this didn't need it and also my biggest gripe with this movie is the interpretive dancing scene That did not did not need to be in that movie I've never seen an interpretive dancing scene in a horror movie oh god I don't know I didn't there is a video I think where Charlie Kaufman and Ian Reid are talking about um, the movie and I know that they wrote the screenplay together I feel like this isn't going to age well, though. I don't know what the author actually feels about it. I think audiences that read the book feel very strongly that the thing that they loved so much and why they loved the book, the horror and the mystery, is gone. And, you know, I think we always want to see like our favorite, like especially for me. This is one of my favorite books of all time. 
This is from an author that I have such huge respect for. And I literally check every couple months to see if he has another book in the works and when it's coming out because I cannot wait to buy that friggin' book. Um, by the way, there is a third book coming. There is like a, th his third book is coming. Um, I think relatively soon, but I don't know when, I don't know what it's called, but I'm so excited. I think when you fall in love with a book so much, you have this thing in your head about what happened and how you saw it and how it made you feel. And then you watch it on screen and it was totally different and nothing at all what you pictured. And you're kind of upset. I think this suffered from a lot of mismarketing because this is not a horror movie. No one would be scared watching this. No one would feel creeped out watching it. Weird movie, yes. But you took a horror thriller, psychological thriller novel and didn't make a psychological thriller horror movie. Um, you know what? I remember reading <laughs> a long time ago about Stephen King saying his least favorite adaptation of all his works is The Shining by Stanley Kubrick. And I remember being like, what the fuck? That movie is my favorite horror movie ever. And it's amazing. And Stanley Kubrick is a phenomenal filmmaker. But when I, I heard Stephen King in a lecture talking about it wasn't that Stanley Kubrick did a bad job creating a movie. It was that it was nothing at all like he wrote. And I get that because the books are very different. The book is very different. That's what happened here. Yeah, I just... I was so mad after I watched this movie. I was so angry. <laughs> I hate this movie. Uh, oh, again, again. Does Charlie Kaufman have talent? Of course. Did he make a artistic movie? Yes. Did, in my opinion, he screw up the adaptation of my favorite book? Yes. Yes. Because again, I was telling everybody to read this book. I was telling everyone, if you love horror and you love psychological thrillers, you need to read I'm Thinking of Ending Things. So many people agreed, loved it. I know so many people that love this, especially like people on YouTube that do books that I follow love this book and they recommend it all the time. This has a huge following and it has a lot of people that love it. There's also people that don't like it, of course, because there's going to be people that don't like something all the time, but this wasn't it. This was not it at all. So yeah, what's better book versus movie? The book, obviously. Um, I would pick the book thousand times over. Um, I never want to watch this movie again and I won't. Um, I don't even want them to even try to attempt to re it. <laughs> just leave it. Just leave it. Just leave it as this really amazing book. Um, I'm not personally mad at Charlie Kaufman. Uh, again, he wrote the screenplay, Ian Reid. So he, he had some say in this. Maybe, I don't know if maybe this is what he kind of wanted. Wasn't it? Yeah. Seems like the audiences and a lot of the people that read the book also didn't like the movie, I noticed. So I think that's where a huge amount of the vibe happens. And a lot of people that maybe just go into this because it's marketed as a psychological thriller and horror. And it's like a two and a half hour long movie. And that is not horror and it is not scary at all. People are going to check out and people are going to think it's boring.
So maybe it's also due to mismarketing, but this, this wasn't it. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, And I should know, like, I should know to be disappointed in an adaptation because so many people adopt Stephen King stuff and so many of it is terrible. So much of it is terrible. Sorry, sorry. Um, so I should be used to this kind of feeling, but honestly, this just invoked something in me. I was just so mad. So, um, let's read the book. If you genuinely like horror and psychological thrilling books with good plot twists, please read the book. It's so good. It's one of my all-time favorites ever. I recommend it to everybody. Um, again, I think this is the fourth appearance <laughs> this book is making in a video. So, uh, that's all I have. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me how your thoughts. Did you like the movie? Did you not like the movie? Did you not like the book? Did you like the book? Please like, comment, and subscribe for more. I have plenty more coming. And uh, I'll have an exit. Bye.